Hi, my name is Andreas and I am one of the founders of Coded. We are very happy and proud to be part of the new digital design and creative coding hub in Ghana. The idea of the hub is to empower children and teachers to create their own worlds and make their own ideas happen by equipping them with digital tools and knowledge. We at CODED have one goal. We want to give every child the opportunity to learn programming. That's why we created an online learning platform where kids can learn coding in an easy and fun way. I'm looking forward to see all the new projects that will be created in the hub and I hope I see you there. What is coding? Coding or computer programming is what makes it possible for us to create computer software, apps and websites. Your browser, your operating system, the apps on your phone, Facebook, WhatsApp, etc. are all as a result of coding. I am 8 years old. I started learning how to code last year in March. I am 10 years old. I started learning how to code in March 2018. I'm 10 years old. I started coding at age 9. My dad inspired me to learn coding. My mom inspired me to learn how to code. My sister was the one who inspired me to learn how to code. When I code something, that's what I want. That also makes coding fun and interesting. But sometimes I have trouble remembering the code. So when that happens, my teacher helps me. Coding is interesting to me because I get new things to learn about. It's also difficult because sometimes I don't understand some parts of JavaScript and I have to get my teacher to explain over and over again. Coding is fun and interesting because it makes human life more comfortable. Some of the challenges I face are algorithms in PHP because it's a server side scripting language. You're supposed to like have algorithms and understand before you can write PHP or learn PHP. When I started coding, I used Scratch and App Inventor to make animations and games. Then I used HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to create websites. I also used Bootstrap and more JavaScript to improve those websites. Some of those websites are recipes and real estate. I created a travel and tour website because in Ghana, many people don't find interesting places to go. My website is called Elegant Travel and Tours and it helps people to book a ticket to reserve a place to register somewhere to go and to contact me. In doing my website, I used Bootstrap and JavaScript and a little of CSS. With the knowledge I've acquired, I've been able to create a few websites. The first one is Salamanda, which talks about domains, and I used HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. The second website is called Codemasters. It talks about coding. It also sells themes and it talks about ICT. Some people think that it's only boys who, who are supposed to learn how to code, but I don't think it's true because I've been able to learn how to code and develop some websites. I recommend you joining the IIPGH coding class and you love it. Join the IIPGH coding class now. Visit our website www.iipgh.org slash coding. Hi, my name is Sebastian and I'm the CEO of Tinker Toys in Germany. We are very proud to be one of the partners of the Digital Design and Creative Coding Hub in Ghana. With the Hub, we want to empower kids and students to create their own worlds by learning and using digital technologies. Our visual 3D design tool can even be used by kids in elementary school age and allows them to create their own things and figures with 3D printing. 
by using a wide variety of geometric shapes, pre-designed templates and plug-in connectors, the design process is super easy. The software can be used for STEM subjects as well as for creative projects in art and design. We are very happy to be part of the hub and see you there. Bye! The Coding Project. With a move towards digitization worldwide, more people, including those living in developing countries, are participating in the digital economy. The digital economy is going to be even bigger with the commercialization of digital technologies, such as artificial intelligence, data science, blockchain, cloud computing, internet of things, machine learning and mobile applications. This presents opportunities for transforming our economy which will make us competitive in West Africa and allow young people to find decent jobs or start their own businesses. Our unique coding method right, has been you. introduced in the Alpha Beta School Dantuma. I think it's, it's a great thank initiative. Thank you. Shall we all be seated please, those of us standing because we're starting in just uh, a couple of uh, seconds, or oh, let me give it a minute. Let's allow only the official photographers and then videographers to do the standing and then walking around. Are we ready? Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a great morning to all of you and a warm welcome to the launch of the digital design and creative coding hub. My name is Kwesi Kwetia, and our theme for today is Make Ideas Happen. And it is so because coding has become more important than before in our world today. Technology is teaching us new and smart ways to work efficiently. Therefore, the Institute of ICT Professionals, together with their German partners, Codet and Think and Toys, are bringing us an ultra-modern coding hub facility that would help entrepreneurs and employment in our country today. And I think this is something that we should all be very grateful for. We should embrace it because technology is leading the way all over the world today. And I can assure you that when we embrace this, we will also find ourselves competing in a new normal and making the change that we all need. On that note, I'd like to invite the Executive Director of Institute of ICT Professionals Ghana, Mr. David Gou, for a brief remark.
Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Honorable Minister for Communication and Digitalization, Mrs. Osla Owusu Ekufu, our invited, our special invited guest, um, board members of the Institute of ICT Professionals, students, parents, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the launch of the Digital Design and Creative Coding Hub. Today marks the beginning of another era for our relatively new professional association. The Institute of ICT Professional Ghana, as we adore our, one of our new flagship programs, is poised to change the way children learn coding. The Institute mobilized ICT professionals to start the Coding for Kids initiative three years ago, a program designed to amplify the relevance of practical ICT skills development through computer programming. Professionals from IIPGH embrace the concept and embark on a nationwide campaign through social media radio and television interviews, workshops, webinars, and structured training sessions in classrooms and online. This resulted in over 10,000 students being trained on basic, intermediate, and advanced digital skills with coding as the main focus. The activities of IIPGH quickly caught the attention of diaspora partners such as Code for Africa, Code It, Tinker Toys, Afos Foundation, all from Germany. Through some of these collaborations, Code It, Tinker Toys, and the Institute of ICT Professionals contemplated the idea of setting up a hub that is not restricted only to those who can code but everyone who can use digital tools for design, creativity, and art. The notion that some people, particularly girls, cannot aspire to become software engineers, digital designers, or robotic experts is not true. The Digital Design and Creative Coding Hub is here to dismiss this myth and help young people with a facility where they would participate and experience new and emerging technologies in the areas of science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. At the hub, we have trained tutors who will teach, guide, and mentor our students in Codex software to ignite their creativity and also in Tinker Toys so that they will be able to learn how to use 3D design and printing. All you have to do is to imagine anything, use the tools to design it, and print it out as a physical evidence of your imagination. We believe innovation starts with these exposures, and we are ready to partner government and other organizations to make this a reality for young people in Ghana. Once again, I want to use this opportunity to welcome you all to the launch of the Digital Design and Creative Coding Hub, particularly our special guest the Honorable Minister of Communications and Digitalization, MP for Ablekuma West, Mrs. Asla Osu Akufu. I recall four years ago, the Institute of ICT Professional paid a courtesy call on you to inform you about this organization and our activities. 
we are very excited that four years down the line, we've been able to outdoor one of our flagship programs. Thank you all, and I look forward to a very uh, exciting day. Thank you. Executive Director of the Institute of ICT Professionals, Ghana, Mr. David Go, giving us a thorough overview of what the Digital Design and Creative Coding Hub will look like. Before I continue with the rest of the items that I have here online, let me quickly acknowledge some dignitaries that are with us and in some other partners. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of the Deputy Director General of General Operations National Communication Authority and board member of the Institute of ICT Professionals Ghana, Mr. Prince Sefa. I also like to acknowledge the presence of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs Germany, Dr. Peter Kettner. All right, so what I also want you to know is we have some of our partners online, as you can see over there. So as much as you may not see them here, some of them are, are online and listening to us. I also like to acknowledge the presence of the head of unit, Saxon State Ministry of Regional Development, International Cooperation, Germany, Mr. Ronnie Zenet. President, Academic City University College Board Chair, Institute of ICT Professionals, Professor Fred Mark Bangalori. Thank you. Deputy Minister Designate for Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration and MP for Mampon, Honorable Kweku Abritum Sapon. All right, thank you very much. In between time, as some of our dignitaries join us, I would come over here and then also make sure that they are duly acknowledged. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, we're going to move on to a brief introduction to, into Thinker Toys. And I'd like to call on the, no, let's do Coded before. And I'm going, I'd like to call on the CEO of Coded Leipzig, Germany, Mr. Andreas Koch. Thank you. Um, good morning uh, here from Germany. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to see uh, that we have so many people uh, attending live at the Hub and also online. It's very exciting to see this uh, here from Germany. First of all, uh, I would like to thank our partners. Um, first of all, the, the Institute of ICT Professionals, namely uh, Mr. David Go and Mr. Richard Amanfu, and also Tinker Toys, uh, Mr. Sebastian Friedrich and Ms. Lena Baumgarten for being uh, such great partners uh, here in, in this project uh, for all the time, effort and, and work uh, you put into the project and uh, you're the people who, who made this project and the hub happen. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, next, I, I would also um, like to welcome uh, Ms. Ovusu Ekufu, the Minister of Communication in Ghana. It's, it's a really pleasure, it's a great pleasure and an honor uh, to have you here at, at the hub and to, to open the hub uh, today. Thank you very much. Uh, I would also like to welcome uh, Mr. Kettner, um, who is the head of the policy unit of the Department for Culture and Communications from the Federal Foreign Office here in Germany. And then uh, I would also like to welcome Mr. Zinat, um, who is the head of the unit of innovation management, EU and international cooperation at the Saxon State Ministry of Regional Development. And of course, uh, I want to thank all the participants uh, who 
joined in our training workshop that was part of the project. Uh, thank you all very much for, for all the great feedback uh, you gave on, on Tinker Toys and Coded. Um, and we will have a presentation, presentation of them uh, later at the opening here. And I'm, I'm very happy to see all the, the kids uh, in front of the, the computers using Coded and playing around with it. Uh, very welcome to the hub, uh, especially also to you, to the next generation. Uh, it's, it's a real pleasure to, to see you all there. I hope you're having fun. Um, yes, and, and also uh, I want to thank everybody who is who's joining us uh, live and uh, online uh, via Zoom here at the, the opening. And I'm, I'm hoping very much that uh, many of you will, will use the hub in the future to, to make your own projects happen, to uh, yeah, um, use, use the, the, the hub we're creating here. Okay, um, I would now uh, like to use the time to introduce you very briefly to uh, code it. Um, yeah, I would need to share my screen. Uh, if the host please can allow me to share my screen. Then I can start my presentation. Okay. Okay. Coded is a online learning platform that teaches children coding in a very easy and fun way. In our digital world today, um, digital skills and especially coding and programming becoming more and more important. If you want our children to be able to understand and to shape our digital world, we need to teach them at least basic coding skills. We at Coding are convinced that coding and, and programming will become one of the most important skills in the future. We think it will be as common as reading and writing is today. Unfortunately, the education system in in Germany, in Ghana, and many other countries is lacking behind in teaching those very necessary digital skills. Those are the reasons why in 2017 we started uh, CODED, because we have the aim to give every child the opportunity at least to um, learn coding and, and, and try this uh, and see if, if they're interested in this. What is the online platform Coded offering? The, the central feature of Coded are our interactive self-study online courses. In, in those courses, we teach the kids basic programming concepts. We don't teach a specific programming language, but the basic concepts that are uh, equal in every programming language. To teach this, we use, we use uh, motivating content. Uh, we don't want to make coding dull. We use games, animations, uh, stuff that uh, really ca captures the, the interest of the kids. But Coded is more than just a learning platform. We are convinced that the, the best learning is taking place when the kids uh, um, apply their, their new knowledge. And not only taking in, but uh, use it and getting creative with, it, with the, the knowledge they have learned. That's why uh, we provide uh, different programming environments on our uh, site. Uh, in those programming environments, Kids can develop their own projects, they can get creative and um, really use the skills they've learned. 
teachers can use our maker areas to create their own courses and assignments uh, for kids. Yes. We are also convinced that the most important actor in changing the education uh, towards our, our digital world are the teachers. That's why uh, we provide teachers with uh, ready-to-use teaching material that they can easily apply in their classes. We also offer teacher special teacher accounts that uh, make organizing and, and supervising uh, classes uh, very easy. And uh, last but not least, we also do a lot of professional uh, development uh, trainings like we also did in this project uh, to provide teachers with the skills they need to teach kids. Okay, so far uh, for the brief introduction of CODIT, um, yes, and I would like to give the attention back to the moderator. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Andras Koch, CEO Codet, Leipzig, Germany, giving us an overview of Codet, some of the tools that uh, we need to learn and also to upgrade ourselves so that you know we can find the best ways to do things. And it's obvious now to all of us that in some few years or months to come, we'll all be working from home. Because, I mean, if you have the computer at home and uh, everything is well organized and centralized, you can work from your home and deliver on point like your boss would want you to do. So that was a very good one. We're going to have another session of overview. And I'd like to call on the CEO of Tinker Toys Leipzig, Germany, Mr. Sebastian Friedrich. Hello everyone. Let me start by saying that we are very happy to be part of the hub and um, we want to thank all the partners, all the trainers, all the sponsors, um, all the development partners, all the government partners for bringing this hub to life and uh, give many kids the possibility to yeah, shape their future by learning in the hub and uh, create their, their own future. Um, I would also be happy to share my screen. I, I prepared a brief introduction to Tinker Toys. So. Yeah, let me start by saying that we are um, a company that um, is focused on making 3D design for kids as easy as possible. Our vision is to empower kids to create their own worlds by using digital manufacturing tools, as you can see in the picture. Um, it's already been super easy to, to use tools for creating your own apps and softwares and games. Uh, with tools like Scratch or Coach, Coded Studio that you saw from Andreas uh, just now. But it's always been pretty hard to, to make physical goods, uh, basically create your own toy or create uh, things in the real world for 3D printing um, has always been something that you yeah, basically needed an engineering degree for to do it. And uh, our goal was to change that. To do that, we developed Tinker Toys, uh, which is a visual 3D design tool uh, for kids starting at elementary age or even younger, um, if you want to try it out. Um, I have a short video that highlights the main features of the software.
Okay, it seems like we're having a uh, technical issue here. Um, so let me move forward to the education material. Um, our software is uh, based around a visual 3D canvas that allows you to uh, create your own products by using geometric shapes, uh, pre-designed templates for uh, maybe cars or figures, uh, stuff that you know uh, from the television, robots, or basically anything that you want to do. And you can also use um, connectors for uh, moving arms, uh, spinners for tires of your car, uh, basically everything you need to create things in 3D. Around this software, uh, we developed a wide range of education materials. Uh, some of them you already uh, saw uh, in the trainings, uh, if you uh, are a mentor of the hub or a participant in the trainings. Um, right now we offer 15 learning units with a wide variety of subjects. Um, starts with uh, basic mathematics and geometry um, over creating your own solar system uh, and even bigger projects where you learn to create your own innovative pro product by using uh, design thinking and other innovation process tools. Uh, just to give you a few examples of our teaching materials, uh, we have one learning unit that um, resembles around uh, geometric shapes. This one is especially for younger children ele in elementary age. Um, there they learn um, positional relationships and properties of uh, basic geometric shapes like cubes and spheres and yeah, make their first steps in the 3D world. Um, another learning unit that we have I, that I like very much is uh, one where you can create your own environment. Um, that's also something we did in the trainings for the hub. Um, there the students uh, recreated their own uh, classroom or the digital design hub in 3D uh, using geometric shapes and yeah, basic um, 3D designs and uh, were able to print this room out and optimize maybe the layout and something like that. Uh, something that we're very proud of, uh, David already mentioned it, uh, is that all these uh, digital tools are not something uh, only for boys. Um, one of our main goals is to motivate girls uh, to try out uh, all the tools and use them in STEM subjects and uh, show them that it's easy to do it if you just start and try it out. Um, we are very happy to see that uh, in our software we have 40% uh, girls and 60% boys. So there are already thousands of girls in the world uh, that use our software and yeah, you can do it too. In Germany we have a wide variety of partners already uh, ranging from education ministries to um, hardware resellers and schools or education specialists. Uh, all over in Germany, as you can see here. And we are looking forward to see you in Ghana and find new partners in Africa and in the Creative Coding Hub. And yeah, together, let's make ideas happen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Sebastian Frederich. And we just took a trip to Germany. How many of you enjoyed your business class trip? Oh no, we we'll just wait. To, if you can code it, you can just go to any country right now and then you code back to where you came from originally. So let's come back to Ghana. This is where we can see each other clearly. And I'd like to introduce our next speaker. He's right here with us and he happens to be the Director of Operations Institute of ICT Professionals, Ghana, Mr. Richard Kafui Amandu. Amanfo. Good morning to you all. And welcome to our 
pub lunch. I'm here to take you through briefly why the hub. Basically, we're talking about the concept of the hub, why and what it is all about. To start off with, we'll have a little conversation around uh, the background of digitalization, why we need to learn coding and digital design, the implementation of this whole project, its goals and objectives, and of course, the sustainability. In every revolution, we have the plus and the minuses. This digital revolution has brought us a lot of good things. It's brought us emerging technologies that we all know. Some in the space of the 5G, mobile applications, robotics, artificial intelligence, cloud computing, and of course, what we're about to introduce to you, to you here, which is the 3D technology. We would all agree that in our various places of works and homes, we use either artificial intelligence products, or services, we are engaged in bits and pieces of robotics here and there. And it would interest you all to know that even uh, some of the vehicles we use, or all the vehicles we use, are powered by some of these digital technologies we have with us today. Certainly these this revolution comes with few challenges. And notably, we are very concerned about the skills gap. This digital skills gap, which is either in our homes or in our workplaces, is something that we are very keen on helping to tackle. Digital skills can be seen as both expensive and inexpensive. Of course, if we have setups like these scattered around the whole country, rightly, many of them will be very expensive to afford. Others have issues of scaling up or expanding the setup, and certainly sustainability is also a challenge. We have lack of qualified instructors there are many of such setups that are struggling to find the right tutors to help teach young ones in a very particular way. This day, we would all agree that teaching is not what it used to be like before. There are other issues such as infrastructure where we need to take care of. If the country had such facilities scattered around, I bet we'll be having a different conversation here today. There is also the issue of lack of rele relevant curriculum. So even the setups that are there, in one way or the other, are struggling to find the, real rec the, the actual required curriculum to be able to teach participants or people who visit such facilities. How do we address these challenges? We as an outfit here, we are poised to help to achieve a goal, which is addressing such digital challenges. 
It's very important that we take into consideration the need to learn new skills. And talking about skills, we are talking about digital skills from basic to advanced. Like the other guests rightly said, if a child could have at least one basic skill in computer programming or coding, then it will be a good skill for the future. So it is important that we introduce new learning skills in the field of digital technology from, ad from basic to advanced. And for our outfit, we are more focused on the children because they are the future. There is also the need to consider issues of inequality associated with gender, geographical location, and also persons with special needs. Once again, all the speakers have mentioned the focus on the female inclusion. And it is what we are actually thriving to achieve. We want to have more females participating in the field of technology. The myth or the, 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 the understanding that this area of, 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 of expertise is only for the male child isn't true. We want to really clear that and uh, make sure that every girl child would have the opportunity to participate. What are we here for? What do we stand here as a, as, as a hub? Rightly, as you can see, it is a showroom for these tools so we can have better digital learning concepts and creative works for both private and business use. We want to make coding and digital design available to everybody and to be able to access these tools and to have new approaches to teaching and learning. It is of interest that the tutors we will be having would be able to teach in different methods and approaches so that the child of today would be able to have an easy flow with what we call the digital technology. So it shouldn't be the notion, as it were, that technology is difficult and it's only for boys. There is also the need for infrastructure, like, like I mentioned before, where internet accessibility is available, there's enough hardware, and effective instructional concepts and, of course, qualified teachers. We as an outfit or as an organization have been able to train young ones to become our tutors. For this project, we have trained over 25 tutors drawn from schools, from professional organizations, and individuals who just graduated from tertiary and have been seeking for job. So indirectly, we're also providing jobs, and this is what we want to do. We've all been speaking about the same thing over and over, why we need to learn coding and digital design. Coding is now an integral aspect of us. And it is something that we must imbibe in us to learn. If we really want to understand today's world, then we cannot do without coding. Learning coding or computer programming is no more for the computer scientist alone or the software developer. There are many students now graduating from the tertiary from fields like sociology, information science or information studies, geography, name them, biochemistry, who are now delving into digital technologies. They are learning these things because of the nature of the world today. 
without having a skill set in digital skills, you would struggle in your traditional field of expertise. Today, as we have banking, it's all about digital technologies or the digital platform. You wouldn't want to be a banker for the next 30 years where you cannot even understand a simple digital technology or a digital platform or a digital solution. So it is really important that we all try to learn programming or coding. And for the kids, it should be a must for each and everyone to learn at least one programming language. For this reason, we're talking about creative coding, which is just the artisan side of programming, unearthing your, your creativity, unearthing your ideation. We are saying that learning coding, putting together with creativity, gives you an edge to explore in a very free manner and interesting manner, where you put your thoughts and ideas together in a playful way. So we're talking about making it expressive and interactive, unlike functional as it used to be. How do we want to implement this project? First of all, we need to have the technical setup like this we have. The notebooks, as you can see right in front of the children, the smart board as it is here, which is very interactive. Interactive as in you can have multiple connections at a time. You can have your, your whiteboard and you can draw your designs. You can do your simulations and have other participants get connected to it. You share your screen and you have a very interactive work around it. To be able to have this technical setup running, we need, of course, the softwares, which our German partners have rightly provided. We have gone through a series of trainings with the tutors, and we've had a series of workshops with some of our students, which is Codex and Tinker Toys. We hope that this technical platform or this technical setup and softwares will be expanded so we can have more people reaching out and coming to us to study. We also want to have regular trainings and workshops for teachers and trainers and also have lectures and discussions around this digital design and creative setup. We intend to formalize coding in many of the schools. And it is a must. If we had the chance, we would have every school having coding as a core, just like we have mathematics and English. What are, what are some of our goals and objectives? We want to create a space so everybody can come in. And this is what we have done. That's the first. We have done that. I want to encourage learning by doing, by organizing hackathons and competitions so schools can come in and have competitions amongst themselves. We can organize hackathons for all, all other interested professionals. We also want to continue to educate or to train people in a broader spectrum of digital skills, which is from basic to advanced, including teachers and ICT training, trainers, because that's the foremost. If you do not have the right tutors, then the narrative is just wrong. We want to also assist organizations and institutions, especially the educational institutions, to develop and strengthen <coughs> sorry, ICT training programs and materials. More importantly, more importantly like we, we have been discussing, we want to have a focus and have specialized ICT training programs for the females and the disadvantaged. The hub shall also become a lab for research on emerging technologies and digital skills development in the Ghanaian context. We want to localize 
many of the solutions and the learning platforms so it will suit and relate to the ordinary Ghanaian. To add to this, we want to, have, we want to enable knowledge transfer such that it wouldn't only be having just the corporate, uh, corporations amongst us and other corporate bodies, but then after these corporations, knowledge should be transferred to both the tutor and to the ordinary participant. In this case, I'm talking about the public. How do we sustain this facility? Of course, we as an organization would have to generate financial resources to be able to provide professional services to the public. We'd have tailored workshops and trainings at regular intervals for all participants who would be interested and of course we'll take a token for maintenance. Other technology trainings and exhibitions and boot camps will be organized to raise funds to subsidize some of our trainings for students and teachers. In addition, our 3D printers shall be used to create prototypes for artists and engineers, architects, etc. Later on, we would show some of the designs we've been able to print so it can relate with you. And of course, when these printouts are done for these artisans or interested persons, there will be a fee, appropriate fee charged for it, so we can able to sustain this project. The hub is also interested in partnering organizations to develop proposals and also to respond to requests for proposals so that we can bring bigger projects to the hub. Finally, I'd want to say that partners and sponsors who are interested in exhibiting their products or their digital solutions at this hub can come in to do that and will charge the appropriate fee for this. this these are, <clears throat> in a nutshell, what we envisage to do as a hub and as a project. Thank you very much, and thank you for listening. Director of Operations, Institute of ICT Professionals, Ghana, Mr. Richard Kafui Amanfo. All right, thank you very much for giving us the flesh that makes up the body of the digital design and creative coding hub. And I guess we all know what they can do and the message should be taken out there and to the rest of the world so that we can get ourselves into technology because it is very, very important we really just jump on onto this so that you know we can also change our communities, our country, and whatever we are doing. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, we have our reps from Germany. They are right online, and they will also be speaking to all of us. And um, one by one, I think the first person would go, and then we'll be quickly followed by the second person, and then we'll come back to another thing that we have for you here. Hello? I, I, I guess it, I, I guess you remember me, so I'll start. Uh, hello, my name is Peter Kettner, dear participant. Um, hello, everybody. And I want my warm greetings to all of you, um, and especially, of course, to you, the participants of the workshop. Um, thanks for including me um, in the official opening of the Digital Design and Creative Coding Hub. Um, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic has shown us the importance of innovative cross-border cooperation, um, especially regarding techno technological endeavors. And now more than ever, maybe we, we see that the, global com that the co global community needs to focus on its joint experiences and our shared similarities. And we feel that creative industry sector is a strong foundation for and um, advocate of bridging cultural and social gaps and diminishing social and gender inequality. Furthermore, the sector brings about economic growth. 
So creative industry sector um, is and, and calls for innovation, creativity, new approaches and thoughts and thus encourages especially young and diverse minds from all backgrounds and all over the world. The German Foreign Ministry has been an advocate and support, supporter of the sector for quite some time. And, and with its call for proposal in uh, 2019, um, or with our call for proposal in 2019, we aim to particularly support the subsectors design and gaming, as well as in Europe and in Africa. And we had more than 200 proposals, clearly indicating the ever growing demand and the uh, appreciation um, of the creative sector. Um, and we are really delighted that the Digital Design and Creative Coding Hub was chosen as one of the successful proposals. And that we are now here to celebrate, or I'm not, I'm not here, well, I'm here, but I'm not with you physically, but, but, um, but I'm, in, in a sense, I'm, I'm, I'm with you uh, too, to, to celebrate the official opening. Why did we choose the hub? One of the aspects that stood out to us was the inclusion of, of especially young adults and children, and the goal to open their minds, to open your minds, to the vast possibilities um, in the world of coding. The project acts from our perspective as a unifier between creatives from both Germany and Ghana and builds a platform for cooperation and the exchange of experiences and knowledge. Through the training of teachers, young, uh, young people are exposed to emerging technologies and will pass on their gained understanding and knowledge to their peers. That's the aim, and, and, and that can really change not only people, but, but also societies. Thus, the national and international cooperation is lastingly inspired and promoted through this hub, from our perspective. We acknowledge um, our responsibility regarding the promotion of an equal and diverse community, and we particularly appreciate the hub's focus on closing the digital gender gap, um, because Gender equality is a very important issue for us as well. And it's strive for inclusiveness as well as digital equality, particularly for women um, and people with disabilities. Therefore, I would like to thank you all, um, not only for your ideas, but also for your perseverance and your commitment to the collaboration between Germany and Ghana. I would also thank you, like to thank you for your passion for the inclusion of young people of all backgrounds and for your kind invitation to allow me to share my appreciation with you today. We're excited to see where this project will lead and what kind of innovative ideas your participant will develop during its time. I wish you all the success and thanks for, for, for having me. Thanks for, for giving me the time to be with you. Um, I'd like to be, be with you in Ghana, but um, but I, I can't, obviously, but I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, that happens to be Dr. Peter Kettner from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Germany. We are going to take another one, and he happens to be the head of UNIT Saxon State, Ministry of Regional Development International Corporation, Germany, Mr. Ronnie Zenet. Thank you very much, um, dear Minister of Wuzu Ekufu, uh, dear Mr. Gobu, and dear Mr. Amanfu. I agree with you in all things, on all things, um, you make a great job. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear children, you have heard a lot. Uh, I just want to say a little. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor and a pleasure for me to be able to participate in this opening and to speak to you. I'm happy to convey the best greetings from the State Ministry for Regional Development of the Free State of Saxony. I've already been introduced. My unit deals with exciting topics for the future. We want to promote innovation and added value. Our approach is innovation-based regional development. We actively cooperate within our state and with international partners. The European Union and the Committee of the Regions are some of the issues and tasks we deal with. 
Before today's opening, I got to know Mr. Koch and Mr. Friedrich. I was very impressed by the project and the two entrepreneurs. They have the courage to go abroad with their companies and products and to become globally active. We support that. There has to be more international cooperation, also in the creative industries. That's why I gladly agreed to participate. Five years ago, we launched the initiative CMUL Plus. The focus is on innovations. We want to promote innovative ideas and projects in order to accelerate regional change and to set new growth impulses in the Saxon regions. The Latin word CMUL translates, translates as together. This is the guiding principle of our work. We want to achieve added value, a plus, by bringing together partners from companies, scientific institutions, cities, associations, clusters, and interest groups. We want to develop innovative ideas and project projects together. We have set up a virtual hub for this purpose, the CMUL Plus Innovation Hub. I see we all know about a lot about hubs. The Digital Design and Creative Coding Hub shows all the things we find important. More education, more digitization, more added value. Isn't it nice that today we can meet thousands of kilometers away? Networking and cooperation are important for adults, but it's also more important than ever for young people for you, for you children. What is being created here in Accra for kids and teens cannot be found in Saxony. It's a lighthouse project. I would like to thank the Federal Foreign Office for supporting the project. Congratulate you on this event. I wish to have every success, amazed children's eyes, and a long life. May the idea continue to grow, make ideas happen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Ronnie Zenet. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, head of Saxon, head of Unit Saxon State Ministry of Regional Development, International Cooperation, Germany. And uh, we're going to have a demonstration from the Digital Design and Creative Coding Hub. And I would like to call on a couple of names that I have here, Richard, Andrea, Sebastian, Lina, and then the trainee tutors. We're going to have a demonstration right here so that you can have a feel of what uh, we are talk, uh, what is going on and everything about it that you need to know. So uh, shall we have all the names that I've mentioned and then the trainee tutors to join us here quickly so that the demonstration can start. And then uh, can we have a video played at the background? We need that video as they get themselves ready. So a little video, I mean, not, the sound bite should be a little. Hold on, hold on, let me check. What is coding? Coding or computer programming is what makes it possible for us to create computer software, apps, and websites. Your browser, your operating system, the apps on your phone, Facebook, WhatsApp, etc. are all as a result of coding. I am eight years old. I started learning how to code last year in March. I am 10 years old. I started learning how to code in March. I was, I was hoping that you would tell us your name. It's very important. 
we get to know who you are and what you are about, what you're actually coming to show us. So a little brief introduction into what you're going to do will help all of us. Yes, so who is going to lead? Hello, good morning. My name is Deborah Ofori Dati, and I'm here with my colleague. I'm blessing Momo. Okay, so we are tutors of the Institute of ICT Professionals Ghana, and also a part of the Digital Design and Creative Coding Hub project. And we are here to introduce you to one of our platforms, Codex. Yes, so please, I hope you enjoy it. So, um, you can see on our screen here some blocks, and I'm sure most of our students are already familiar with it. So, this is how the interface of Codex looks like. This is one of the games we are coming to create, and this is the Dark Race game. So, um, as you may already know, Coding for Kids makes use of block based programming. So these blocks, we put in other blocks that fit in perfectly, and it's interactive and fun for them to learn. So I'm quickly going to go through how to create this game, and then we play it out for you to see. So the rationale here is that a duck will be jumping on a track, and you have to play the game to let it miss all the potholes that are, are in front of it. So the first thing is that when the game starts, what should happen? We would like to first create a track here. So this is how it works. You go to any of these list of um, tiles and then select the code block that you need. You just click and drag it where it's supposed to be. So because there's not much time, I'll quickly go through what we are supposed to do. So we would want to, to move forward and then um, with the move forward, uh, one thing about coding is that it's a step-by-step -step process. So this move forward, we'll just let it move forward once, and I would like my colleagues to demonstrate it. So the track has been created, and then you saw that it's moved forward once. Now what we want here is that it should continually move forward until the game is over, and that's where this comes in, that it should repeat until game over and then we put everything here, and then we demonstrate it. Okay, so it's moving forward and so it's, it's, it's dead. But then we have to solve that problem. We have to bring one code block that would help us control its movement. That is by turning it when it's about getting into a hole. So we come here, um, and then we bring a change direction. And then the change direction, we, we would have to in it, let it change direction. So either we use a key, a key, or we decide to use, so we decide to use a mouse down. We decide to use on mouse click. So I would like to use a mouse click to change direction. And then we demonstrate it here. So okay. it should be, sorry. What's happening? Oh. Sorry. What's happening? Okay. Okay. Wait, it's still loading. I think your hand is. Okay. okay, so let me run it again. So, sh whenever it's about falling into a hole, she'll just tap it to for it to change <laughs> direction. <laughs> yes. And you can spice up the game by adding coins, um, picking up coins, adding points whenever you're able to pick up a point. So we come here, and then we have add item coin. One important thing is that the, the, the process you go through is very important. And one thing about coding is that it follows um, order. So we would first want to add our item even before we create the track. Otherwise, the track will be created and there wouldn't be any coins on the track. So now we've added our coins. We have the red color here. So we expect that we have some red coins when the track is created again. 
So you see some red so coins some on red it. Coins yes. Are you can easily attention? change the color here. So maybe a yellow. Okay. Yes, and you see our yellow coins. Okay. Okay. So um, the last but one thing we want to do is to add points whenever we are able to pick up an item. So we come here and then we have add points on coin pickup. You can easily change how many points you want by clicking inside here and then we can use our screen keyboard to change it. Yeah. Okay, so I just want... So we will change it to two, okay, 21. Okay, we just want two and then close it. And then demonstrate. So when we are able to, when we are done, we'll play the game for you to see all the things that I've talked about here. And the final thing is that when the game is over, we want it to display game over and then maybe make a sound for us. So here we come to, we come to graphics and sound and then we have show text which will show the game over when the game is over. You can change whatever you want to. So there is all here. We would want to change it to game over. Okay. So he used the mouse to control the game. So our colleague will be playing the game from here. So you can watch. He'll be controlling it. So he's using the mouse click to control it. And um, you can just go on, on and on playing the game. And if we fall into a hole, we see the game over. Yes, yeah, so that is just a brief explanation of how we create a game here. And then we have some of our games. We have some of our games here. Sorry. Yes, this is one game that was created by um, using this platform, so we can play it and see. <laughs> So the score is being shown there whenever it picks up a coin. Okay. And this is one thing that once the kids get their hands on, they can play and play and play on for hours. So we are here for all of you. When you come, we will take you to the basics up to the advanced level. And by the end of it, you'll be able to, you have mastered in creating your own game and animations. My colleague will take you to my colleague will take you to one animation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deborah. So like you have seen the game, it can be very complex. It looks simple, but so. it can be complex. So, uh, but we want you to know that you, you don't have to be anxious in, uh, when it comes to coding because this platform has made it easy for you it has made it easy for you in such a way that you can code in a very playful way. Playful way. So like she said, it's a step by step, a step by step. That's what we call an algorithm in a coding. So I'm going to, like the Codit uh, platform has so many things you can do, which uh, like uh, you can create your own game and um, you can um, develop an interactive uh, animation and um, you can develop graphics, and then many other applications are on the platform. So, like she has taken you through some of the game. We have more games there, but I just want to show you a simple animation that you can do with uh, Codit. Okay, so here, I just want to draw a circle in a canvas. When I say canvas, it's not the canvas you are wearing, kids. <laughs> I mean like, um, in this context, canvas means um, like a plain surface. A plain surface where you can do something like painting, you can put your project and the stuff. So that's what we are going to use. So I already have my, this come with it, so I already have my canvas 
code here. So the width is 300 and the height is this. So this is the color of my canvas. So I'm going to change the color because um, I want it. OK, let me make it black. OK, so please, can you play it for us? Okay, so this is the canvas. The black square you are seeing is the canvas. So, but what I'm planning to do is to draw a circle. So, and I want this circle to be in the middle of the canvas. So, these are the dimensions of the circle you are seeing here, the center X and center Y. So, I'll come here and then change the dimension. Please help me with the keyboard. Okay, I want to make it. 150 and 150. No. Okay, so I want my radius to be 100 at the beginning. Oh. Okay. So, use it. And please run it for us. Let's see. Okay, so right now you can see the circle in the middle of the canvas. So we can go further to make it colorful and nice by adding more circles and more colors to it. So um, I can just come here. Can I use the mouse to right click? So I want to just uh, duplicate it and then place it. And so I've duplicated the code I'm putting it here. Then I'll go to drawing and um, change setting and bring my free color. No. Okay. I'll add my free color here because I want it to be changing colors as I add more circles to it. And as I add more circles to it, I want the radius to reduce so that it will not overlap each other so that each circle will come out. So I don't want the circle to overlap each other. So I'm going to reduce the radius so that you'll be able to see the colors that are coming out. So the second one, I'm going to change the radius to 80 instead of 100. So the circle still remain, but the radius has reduced. So so let's try it and see. Okay, so you can see that the, 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 the second radius has reduced. So you can do it on and on, and then make it like some colorful circular or spiral circle. So if you are coding and you want it to be fast, because we don't have much time, that's why I'm using the duplicator uh, this thing to just duplicate the code so that I can, because it's virtually the same thing, but what I'm doing, I'm changing the colors and I'm reducing the radius. So this one, I'll make it 60. Okay. Okay, so now we are coming. You can see that we are having a round, nice, colorful ball showing, circle showing. So I want to draw a line across the circle. I want to draw a line across the circle. So these are some of the things you do in school anyway. You do them maybe with your paint application, but every program you use in school, there is a code behind it. So that's where comes this coding. So everything you do, there is a code that makes it work. So let's add some line to it to see how it will work. So I'm going to bring a line here and then um, Okay, so now we have X and Y as zero, zero. So let's see whether we'll be able to see any line. We can't see any line yet. So let me add a color to it. Okay, okay. And then I want the line, the stroke to be colorful so that it will be visible. So the stroke is like the edges. The edges that show, if it's very tiny, you will not be able to see it. So, and then uh, I can change this um, to 150. What about the first one? 
Okay, let's see x1 also this one. 150. Okay, so let's run it and see what it will give to us. Can you see some small dots in the middle of it? Okay, so but we want it to be a line. What do we do? We can make it 300. Okay, so you can see the line there showing. So if I want the line to run through, I'll keep on increasing my, the value of y and the value of x so that it can run through. And if I want the, the line to be thicker than this, I can increase the number, the stroke width. Maybe I can make it a five. So you can see that the line has become more thickened. So these are some of the things you can do with uh, coded animation. So, but as she has rightly said, you have to follow some set of instructions when you are doing coding, which is called algorithm. Just like uh, when you are in the house, you are brushing your teeth, you follow some set of instructions. You, 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 when you are brushing your teeth, you know you have to pick up your brush first, then follow by adding your toothpaste and then taking water and then brushing your teeth. Coding is all about that. What you are doing is coding, but it's just because it's a, it's, 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 it's not, it has not been programmed. Okay, it has even been programmed maybe by your parents, but it is coding. You can put it into code and it will come to reality with computer. So I will also show you some of the other animation you can do. So like this, for instance, someone, this is someone else work. So you can see the colorful animation over there. So this is part of the things you can do with Codit and many more. So for the kids, I urge you to all come around and learn it and then we'll take you through from basic to advanced, as she has said, and then you enjoy it. By the time you grow up, you see that you become, um, you'll be able to create a lot of things and make this country a better place for all of us. Thank you. Yes, please. All right, so don't go, don't go yet. I would want you guys to stay here for a couple of minutes. How many of you enjoyed every bit of the presentation? All right, so obviously the kids are enjoying it better than the adults. Yes. That is how we are. We have been created like that. When you become an adult, it's as if all that you're thinking about is just um, the things that you have to be responsible for in life. Anyways. Um, do you have any questions at all so that, you know, we can ask them one or two things when they were taking us through something that they could have explained better here or there. So any questions at all that we can have from any of you? All right. So let me go to the gentleman over there. What's your name? Please, your name and then the question. My name is Royce. And oh, go ahead. My name is Royce. And I really just want to know about that project, the one that they just Tutors, please, are you listening? Uh, please, we want your attention here because uh, Royce, the name is Royce, eh? All right, he's, he's a very distinguished gentleman over there. He's a man of the moment now, so please give him the ears. All right, so go ahead with your, with your question again. Please, I just want to know about that project, the one that's on the screen right now, and how to make it. The microphone is, uh -huh. okay the code is right here but when you come when you register with uh code it will take you through the steps how to arrive at this code because you see that it's a bit complex but you can learn it because uh, we'll take you through the steps by step on which you can arrive at that uh, animation so when you come we'll try and put you through on how to do it because uh, we don't have much time to go through the whole coding. i know i know it's just yeah. um <laughs> trying to get along with you. I mean, as tutors, we need to get to know you better. Yeah, so, I can see do we have any it. more questions from any of you? Well, we've got one from the children. Uh, let me find out whether um, adults, um, men and women, distinguished men and women here, <laughs> any questions at all? Because the point is, whether you're watching or not, your kids will definitely get into coding. And um, one or two questions will give you 
uh, a little bit of uh, how this goes and that would help you a long way in case your son or your daughter comes to you and she's like dad mom auntie please i'm going through a difficulty when it comes to doing this could you please take me through all right so we have one here uh, ju just a quick question um i see that um you have a lot of uh let me call them pre-programmed options and things like that at what point do you uh introduce the kids to the source if you do okay. the source code you mean at what point do we introduce them to this um, they step into the source code introduce them to the source code okay so please you know coding is more of practical so we start it as we begin so what we do is that we just we can give them an idea of what we are coming to do then we start with the source code immediately because it's more of practical whatever you are saying you have to be doing it so that it will show as you are saying it thank you all right thank you very much let me go to my lady over here what's your name are you twins okay <laughs> this my name is Selikin. Selikin. yes go ahead this can this also be done in the app inventor can, you, can, you also be can done? it be done in the app inventor um, she's asking for something. Did you hear her? Huh? All right. I have no idea what it is. Forgive me. Forgive me. I have responsibilities. <laughs> okay. Um, app Inventor, for those of you who don't know, it's a mobile application app for kids. So it uses the same idea here, block-based coding, and we are able to develop mobile application. So this can be done with App Inventor. And as um, Sally Kem is doing App Inventor, she's in the first level. So as she progress, we have the first, second, and third level. And I'm sure by the end of the third level, she'll be able to do something like this. Thank you. All right, thank you. A round of applause for our tutors, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Once again, we would want to know your names. My name is Deborah Ofori Datsu. Deborah Datsi, yeah, Ofori. Ofori Datsi. Ofori Datsi. Thank you, Debbie. I like the smile. Thank you. How much would it cost me? It's priceless. Priceless. I have one million dollars. You don't want it now? Okay. How about you? My name is Blessing Momo. Blessing Momo. Thank you very much. God bless you. You can go now. And then um, we don't have to leave you. He's been working behind the machine, and we have no idea who this very well-built gentleman is. We'd like to get to know you. I didn't know that you had a mustache. <laughs> Talk less of a beard. Well, well, thanks, thanks to COVID. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. All right. So we, my, my name is Gabriel Nyamashti, and I'm also a tutor. All right. Thank you, Gabriel. God bless you. We'll have another team coming from Tinker Toys to also take us through another session of demonstration. And um, quickly, please join me here so that we can see all of you. Introduce yourselves to us. Let's get to know you. Let us know who will be leading the introduction and also what you're here to do. All right? Thank you. Hello everyone. Please, my name is Barbara Siama. I'm here with Jeremy Adolfo. Samuel Corey. So um, we are here today to take you guys through one of our platforms. This is called Tinker Toys. So I'm sure as you came in, you saw some 3D printers over here. So we are going to take you through how to design some of these 3D models with this web application called Tinker Toys. All right. All right. So we want it to be very interactive. We want all of you to get involved. So we are going to be building this model with you. All right. So we'll be building something like this. This is a very simple key holder. So we are going to start one of these models. I hope you guys enjoy it. All right. OK. So the first thing we'll be doing is to choose one of the shapes to start. So we're going to start here. There are a lot of shapes here that you can choose from. We are going to start with 
a pentagon. Okay. All right, so you can see that we have our pentagon shape activated over the plane, right? And there are some arrows on the shape. So these arrows are to enable you to um, resize the pentagon, all right? So with the help of our smart board here, we can use this to um, help the kids to be able to understand or, and also be able to interact with the program that we have over here. So, are they, are they also supposed to be doing it? Exactly, I think so. Okay. So, when I drag, over on this, you see that it elongates the shape, and then the red um, arrow also widens it. So, I don't know if someone can try. Hello, what's your name? Amma. Amma, would you like to try? So, with a smart screen, you can just touch and then drag it and then it will elongate it. Okay, so, exactly, exactly, beautiful, nice, that's okay. Thank you very much. So, we are going to move on to the next thing. So, we want to, this is a key folder as I said. So, we want to add, to customize it, all right? So we want to put a name on the key holder. So in case your key holder gets missing, somebody can return it back to you if they know your name. So we want to figure out a name. Who can give us a name? Maybe a day name. Hello, what day were you born? Do you know the day you were born? Or what's your name? On Friday. I think Friday is Ama. <laughs> or if yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, so we have some 3D letters over here. Mm -hmm. So we are going to drag them and then spell out if yeah. Right, okay, so help us. Is it A or E? <laughs> okay, if yeah, E. Okay. F. Nice. It's an I. I. Beautiful. And then an E, right? Nice. Okay. So now we would have to group these letters, all right? And to be able to group the letters, we are going to use our select tool over here. So we drag over the letters and then it will select all of them for us. Now that we have them selected, we are gonna group them together. So you can see that we have some icons over here. So there's a color picker, a cut um, icon, looks like a scissor, right? This is to cut some of the tools out of other tools, other shapes. And then this is to duplicate, this is the grouping icon that I'm talking about. And then this is to mirror some of the shapes and then this is to um, measure some of the shapes. And then this last box is a, a bin. Okay. And this last box is a bin that you, use, you can use to delete some of the shapes that I have brought up here. All right. So like I said, we are going to group the letters. So I'll click on the group icon and it groups uh, the letters that we have over there. Okay. So now what's next is we are going to pick up the letter and put it on the shape. Okay, so I would activate the magnet too, and then you can pick it and drop it on the shape. Okay, I think the eye wasn't selected during the Okay. So we are going to have our key holder over there called EFIA. Okay. So now we we'll need a hole in the key holder where we'll be able to put our keys through that. 
So how do we create the hole over there? All right. So we are going to use a cylindric tool over there and penetrate through our key holder over there. OK. So now what we want to do is to reduce that cylindric tool. So I'm going to use the proportional scale icon. And then we'll reduce the size of the tool over there, the shape over there. OK. I think it's nice. Nice. And then we'll elongate it. OK. Would somebody like to try? Hello. What's your name? Otu, would you like to help us? OK, so Otu, what we want you to do is to stretch the cylinder, OK, with a green arrow. Nice. I think a little more. Yeah, so select it with a, uh huh, and then drag the green arrow. Beautiful. Okay. So then you are going to position the cylinder in the key holder. And once it's positioned in the key holder, I'm just going to cut with a scissor tool, and it's going to create the hole that we want in the key holder. All right. So, okay. Is it in position? Maybe somebody can help us with a scissor too. Maybe the guys at the back. Hello, yeah, you, what's your name? Kekeli. Kekeli, please, can you come? <laughs> I hope Kekeli can reach the scissor too. Nice. Great. So you see that the hole has been created in the key holder. That's beautiful. So we can also change colors of our key holder over here so using the color picker. OK. So another volunteer to help us with a color picker, maybe a lady. Yeah, you. Can you help us? Yeah. What's your name? Edna. Elikem, all right. So what, what color would you like to make our key holder? Black. <laughs> Interesting. That's nice. OK, so there you go. So once you have, we have our, our design created, we can then export it and then reprint it over here. So I'm sure before the show ends, before the program or the lunch ends, we'll make a print of this particular um, customized key holder for FIA and maybe some of the kids and we'll do that. Thank you very much. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that session. Any questions so far? Any questions? Any questions so far? All right, so as they've rightly said, um, you can see. Uh, you have yeah, a question? Hey. What? I have questions. Yeah, you have to ask if 100 questions, okay? We are here because of you. The name again. Royce. Royce, go ahead with your question. Please, except the key holder, can we make other things like the robot they showed us? Okay, sure. Oh, I hope you heard the question. Yes. So because he he's trying it today at home. <laughs> that's the thing that's going on in his head, right. Royce. Good, Am I good right? Good question, Royce. Yeah, so basically, as um, you saw over there, the shapes are at your disposal. You know, a robot has well, eyes, mouth, a body. So you can use um, 
circles or cylinders for the eyes, the cues for the head. So as long as you have access to all these shapes, then you can build robots, you can build cars, you can make a human model, skeletons, anything that you want. And then um, we'll also talk about the 3D printing shortly. A question? All right, let me go to her. So it's a competition between Royce and then um, the name again. Selikin, man. This is it really necessary to put in the hole. Is it necessary to put in a bowl? The hole. The hole, okay. Okay, so um, there is no one way to achieve a design, okay? The reason why we put in the, the hole in the key holder is so that what you can hook your keys to it, okay? But somebody can also say that, hey, me, I don't want it to be a hole. I want to make something like a knob and then maybe I'll tie my keys around it or I'll lock onto it or something like a press start. So it depends on you. Somebody can even say that, look, I'll do it without the hole, but when I finish printing, I'll drill the hole myself. Do you get it? So it's up to you, the designer, um, the function that you are intending it for, then you do it. Or is there any other suggestion that you also had, like aside the hole, is there something else you could have, you think you can do? If you think of something, let me know. All right. Okay, so I think that should be it for now. So um, let me move on to the 3D printing. So thanks to the de developing technology so far, you know, at first, if you had something, maybe you want to send a letter to somebody or something, you had to scribble it on a pen yourself and then you send even application for employment and stuff. Or yeah, yeah, send a letter to a friend. People used to write on papers and say, then we came to, or we had printers that can print stuff on a sheet of paper or like the flyers you are holding. So now you just type on your computer and then you print. Now that technology has, is, is my voice clear enough? That technology has um, grown enough so that now instead of just printing flat things and pictures on sheets of papers, we are now able to print in three dimensions, which is what we call 3D. So 3D means three dimensions. Three dimensions means that it's not just flat as in what you have, um, the text just flat on a paper like this, but then you can actually have text and other shapes that stand out. They have depth, they have um, a height and a width and a depth. So it's in three dimensions, 3D. I'll pass some of these objects around the table so that you can feel them yourself. So now we have what we call 3D printers. The ones when you are able to get your design on the computer, they are able to reproduce it exactly as it is, not just as a flat picture, but in the full three-dimensional form. So let me pass a few of the objects, this um, uh, logo with a text on it, similar to the key holder we are doing here. Um, so kindly look at it and pass. We also have one, a 3D printed whistle. So um, Royce, you asked about robots. Somebody just used the shapes to design a whistle, and then we 3D printed, pardon? You want to try it. So when it gets to you, blow it and let everybody see. So that's the whistle coming up. Please make sure it gets to Royce. <laughs> yes. Um, and this one of the logos that we cut the hole in so that you can hook your key onto it. Let me, I think I should pass some in this direction too. So, so, and these are other toys. These are owls like um, designs. It's not just, um, you, can, you don't just 3D print for maybe function or for using for something, you can just print something as a decoration. So this is one of those things. They are just ours that we printed with our 3D printers. So you can have a look at them. Please, when you check, make sure they get back to me. I know that some of them are really nice. You'd want to keep them. We'll try and get you something to don't worry. So I think you guys should pass it zigzag. All right, so I'll take you through the uh, bit of the basics of 3D printing. And then once this hub is set up, um, Parents can um, see the tutors and then you sign up and then on weekends or when you have time, you can come for intensive training on the 3D. So if the camera can um, come up close here right now, you can see that we are printing one of the owls on this printer, okay? Yeah, you can watch it from that screen, yes. So as you can see, I think you can already see the legs, right? Yes, so how the 3D, printer works is that, I mean, somebody be like, how can you model something like this fully? So the idea behind it is that, um, how do I put it? We start from the ground. 
yeah you, it's okay okay sure so the idea is that whenever um whenever you take any shape okay we start from the ground and then build it towards the top so the computer um, when we design it on the tinker card or other 3d programs we give it to a computer software which whatever design that you gave it it breaks it down into layers those who have the 3d prints if you look at it you can see that there are some tiny lines uh, in between so it breaks it down into layers and then it knows that okay um, the first the layer down here it looks something like a square so it prints that square first then it comes up a little prints the next, the next, the next, the next, and then by the time you realize we are at the top, and then it forms the exact shape that you want it to form. So um, let me see if let me see if I can start a new one for you to see. So let me pause this one for the meantime, and then we will restart it for you to see how the whole process starts. Right now the the limit of this technology currently is how long it takes to produce a design. So you realize that um, we set some of these up in the morning, but then they are still not done printing. For instance, these owls that you saw that you passed around, they took about 48 minutes. The whistles took about 50 minutes to print. Uh, Royce, did you get to test the whistle? Uh, it worked? You're great, great. So I'll just um, do a quick, maybe two minutes demonstration. You see how it prints in the two minutes and then later when you sign up you can come and have a full view of how everything prints okay so all right so let me start you uh, in a bit of the basics okay Now the 3D printer has what we call the 3D printer has what we call axis. So, um, how many of you have drawn on graph sheets before? So you know x axis and y axis. Uh -huh. Now when you, that's two dimension x and y. When you come to 3D, we have another axis we call the z axis or z axis. So over here on the 3D printer, we can have the x. So yeah, if the, as the camera is there, I'll try and move on the X and Y axis and you see. So if I move on the X, can you see something is moving? So that thing goes to our left and right. So that's the X axis that we have there. And then when you go to the Y, can you see something moving from the screen over there? Can you see something moving? So we see that the bed down there goes to forward and backwards. That's the Y axis. And then finally, if we go to the Z, can you see something moving? What's moving? The bar is going what? Upwards and downwards. So that's the Z axis. So those are the three dimensions that the 3D printer works in. So based on your design, the computer determines should it go forward, should it go backwards, should it go upwards, and then it follows that pattern to trace your design for you. So let's start something. So we go to print. The model that we are printing, after you design on a computer, you put it on a, a pen drive or SD card, and then you insert in the printer. So we already have one inside. So print the out pair, and then, yeah, the design comes on. Okay, so how the printing works is that, as um, I hope you all have had a feel of, um, of the items we've 3D printed. Yes. Thank you. Yes, I hope you all had a few. You can see that these are rigid plastics. So where, where are the plastics coming from? Are they coming from the air or something? Does somebody have any idea where the plastic is coming from? Yes? Coming from the filament. Hey, how do you know it's called filaments? <laughs> good, 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 good. So this thing that we have here, oh, let me use this. This thing that we have here is what we call the filament. It's... Okay, I hope you all can see. It's similar to the thread and needle that um, seamstress and tailors used to sew. 
but in this case, it's not thread, it's plastic. So this is plastic that has been put in this form. So when you put it in the 3D printer, what the 3D printer does is it heats it up to a high temperature, about 200 degrees Celsius, very hot, hotter than hot water, so that it's able to melt the plastic. So once it melts the plastic, then it can deposit it into any shape that you want, whatever shape you design. So you can see these sofas here and all that. If we had the time, we would have been able to print as, as long as we have the shape here, we can get it printed. So it melts the plastic filament that we saw, and then based on the shape that we have designed, it traces the outline on the bed. So we will see a demonstration shortly. This, and the color that comes out is determined by, of course, the color of the filament. So orange is from the orange filament, green is from the green, and then the wine is also from the wine filament. So we are using this printer with the wine filament. So our print will be starting shortly. It's heating up to the required temperature. Okay, so yeah. As you can see, the head has started moving. We call this the nozzle head. That's where the 200 degrees temperature is and that's where the filament comes out. So you can see it has started tracing some lines. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, based on whatever shape you are printing, it starts from the base and then it builds it upwards. So these are the owls that we are printing. You see that the underside looks something like this. So it's, it takes that shape and then it builds it and then it builds it layer by layer by layer. So we'll leave this one to run and then hopefully after the other sessions are done, you can come and see how far it has gone and you, you'll be able to tell whether it's true that we are making this shape or it's something else that we are making. Okay, so at this point, if there are any questions, they are already hands up. All right, so let me deal with them over here. What's your name, please? Kimberly. 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 What's your question? Um, so I wanted to ask you the 3D printers are from Tinkertot. So, so. Come, Come again. again. Are the 3D printers also from Tinkertot? Are the 3D printers from Tinker Toys? Oh, okay. So these um, 3D printers are made by different, different companies. These ones that we have here are made by a company called Prusa. We have other companies, Creality, Ultimaker, um, Anycubic. So um, different companies also make them. And then hopefully, as you learn your coding and then you learn the technology behind, maybe one day you can also start your company and make 3D printers in Ghana. Okay, so the long and short of what you're saying is, yes. when it comes to all the resources that you need to aid you when it comes to coding, you just have to come to the Institute of just ICT, have to come to where professionals ICGH. Ghana, and then they will lead you to the right source. Exactly. All right, let me take the question from here. Please, the seat on the screen, is it from the ships or you made it yourself? Come again. Come again. The seat on the screen. Mm -hmm. Is it from the shapes? Or oh, you made it yourself. Or oh, you made it yourself. Okay. Can I make Madam to answer that question? All right. <laughs> okay. So, um, these seats were made from shapes. Okay. So I'm going to restart this, and then you see how it was made. Okay. Right. Yeah. While she's doing it, we can still take other questions. All right. So let me come to Royce. The dangerous man. <laughs> Please, I just wanted to ask about the machine. Yes. Does it hit the filament to a point that it can actually destroy its own self? The I, li I like this boy. <laughs> I tell you. Yeah. Okay. Push him to the wall. <laughs> That's good. So, good question. So, um, before the machines came out or before they are sold, a lot of testing goes on in the company. So the company has been able to find out that for this kind of filament, we need about 200 degrees Celsius. So they chose the nozzle tip, which can withstand about 1,000 degrees Celsius. So that even in case of a fault, you know that we are not going to go so much high. So we choose the parts so that they are not damaged by itself. Great question. I think I worked with a printer, some of these fake ones, ones that when the temperature went a bit high, some of the wires started burning. So if you buy from a good company, then you know that everything can withstand um, whatever condition. We don't want right. our houses to get burned away. At all. Thank you. All right, so I have another question here. Do all... Your name, please. Aram. Aram, Aram go. Yes. All right, go ahead. Do all colors have filaments? 
Do all colors have filaments or do all filaments have colors? Okay, well, we take both of them. So, um, right now, when, um, when the 3D printing came, we used to have only colors like white and black. Those were the most common colors. But right now, they found ways to mix up the plastic with other colors. So you can find your red, your green, your yellow, the rainbow colors. You can find ones which look like wood. You can find ones which look like gold. You can find some which look like silk. And you can find some which are a mixture of colors. And in fact, recently, there are some that have been transparent. So I think I can say that, yes, you have filaments for all colors. All right, let me take another question here. Your name? McCaffrey. McCaffrey, go ahead. Um, how high can it go? What you are building? How high? Very. When you print it, how high can, can it go? go? High. Very good question. Very good question. So, how high your prints can go depends on the height of your 3D printer. So, as you can see, our printer here can go about 200 millimeters or 20 centimeters. If you have your ruler, you can check that. So, somebody be like, what if this is the only printer I have and I want to print something higher? So what you do is that you make your design in bits. So you can make it such that you print the first part 200 and then you leave a place that you can screw or yeah, put a screw or something. And then you print the other part and then you fit the two together. So that's how you can print things that are larger than the printer. But there are also printers that are very huge. Some can take like half of this room and all that. Yes. But all right, so let me, let me, let me ask you this personally. Yes. If you look at the gathering over here, we have people from the media. We have someone who is an engineer. We have someone. I am a speaker. So basically, that's what I'm doing right now. Yeah. With all these sets of people that are here, how do we incorporate what we do into this coding technology that you're teaching us? What are some of the things that we can also do to enhance our work? That's the question. Okay. Um Specifically for the 3D printing towards 3D or I'm asking, or it could be from Thinker towards, it could be from okay. Coded, the both okay. of you. The point is, uh, we are we seem to be asking questions from, most of the questions are coming from the kids. That's so, fine. Okay. Okay. But then as adults, so, we're yes. also here. Yes. How can we also use what is being taught right now okay. to incorporate, how can we incorporate it into, into what we do? What you do. Because All at right. the end of the day, we want to be efficient. We want to bring results that count is yes. that not the case excellent thank you excellent so um for instance looking going towards the media side like this you realize um i can use a common example like a smartphone i mean at first you used to have to go and buy expensive equipment before you can go somewhere and record a video and audio or do an audio interview but when the smartphone came, people were able to do what? They were able to code. They were able to code recording software. They were able to code video capturing software. So because of that coding aspect, they've been able to put those software on your smartphones so that even as a media person, you are able to do your work easier and more efficient. If you come to the engineering aspect as well, maybe somebody is in their workshop, maybe they need a clamp to hold something, but then it's not finding that type on the market or maybe you cannot go out at that time. If you know how to use your 3D printer, you just design your clamp on your software, you 3D print it, and then you use it to work. So basically all aspects of our life, now the ICT, the coding has intersected. So um, any, anything at all, anything at all, we can just okay. like, improve on it. All right, let's, let's take, uh, we're going to take the last two questions and that's going to come from her and then the gentleman over here. Hello, my name is Ella Bill and I'm asking, sir, please, when you started, we could see that the printer started with a straight line. Why yes. did that okay? Oh, okay. Let's take this one too. Wow. My name is Jason David Ashon. And is it possible to print two things at the same time? Okay, so the straight line, and then is it possible to print two things at the same time? Uh, you, you people ask like super smart questions. Um, that's a very good observation. If the camera can come here. Yes, you realize that what we are interested in is the house here, but she was able to observe that it printed this line first before it went to the house. The reason it prints this line first is that, you know, a, a 3D printer is a machine and like any machine, there can be issues with it. Sometimes maybe something has blocked the filament so it's not flowing well. So it, it does this line so that before it starts the print, you can inspect the line and look at the quality that is it good, is there a problem? So that if there's a problem, you stop it before it starts the main thing and then waste your time or waste the material. 
And the other question was, uh, can you print two things at the same yes. time? Yes. So yes, you can print two things at the same time. And um, in the software, you can place, for instance, um, just like this. You see there are tables here. There are um, some hexagons and other shapes here. So you can just put all this shape as a command for the 3D printer. And there are two ways you can print. You can tell it to either print all of them at once. So it prints the base of all of them. It prints the middle of all of them. Then it prints the top. Or you can also give it a command so that it prints the individual elements. So if it prints this shape fully before it goes to the next one and prints it fully before the next. So you can print multiple things at once. All right. So thank you very much. Um, quickly. Uh, shall we have your final thoughts on your presentation so that we can move on to another section because we have another important session that we need we need to quickly get on all right so i think i would like to pick on one of the questions you talked about about adults using the 3d printing so i think it's very necessary because there are some artifacts that we use maybe household artifacts that we adults we use at home you can get a 3d printer design your own thing with Tinker Toys, and then print it yourself. It could be, um, you can even print a plate, a cup, whatever. It's plastic, and you can build anything that you want to create. Thank you very much. Yeah, okay, so thank you very much, everyone. And as you can see, there are a lot of things you can do with the um, Tinker Toys platform. So just come and register, and then you learn more. Thank you. No, don't go, don't go, don't go. You guys should go. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, before they go, I'd like to have all of them. Uh, please, all of you, Tinker Toys and then code it. Our tutors, why don't you all come? Mumbre, I'm going to go to the country and I'm crying. You're fine, you're bad, you're bad, you're bad. I'm going to go to the country. Uh -huh. So these are the able men and distinguished ladies uh, when it comes to Thinker Toys and then um, Code It. And they are definitely representing the digital design and creative coding hub. And I'm sure that there are more people that are being put together or they're being trained to actually be able to be there for these uh, wonderful people. So, I mean, if you also hear you're interested, you can also join the team because at the end of the day, we all want to uh, do something that would bring proper uh, and meaningful results to our communities and our nation and wherever we find ourselves, and particularly to our work. Thank you all very much. A round of applause for all of them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's time for us to have a, a message from some of our partners. And Ofos Foundation is right here in the house. And uh, they have a rep, and I would like to personally introduce the rep to all of you so that you know we can get from them what they actually came here to do for all of us so david i'm waiting on you offers foundation so i'm going to call on hannah hannah please are you in the house Oh, right here. Okay, so Hannah, quickly come over here. Let's have a conversation. Let me get to know you personally so that you can start your presentation. So, Hannah, is that your full name? Mine is Chris Equity and yours is? Almost, almost full name. Hannah, oh. Hannah Schlingman. All oh, right. Yeah. So, Office Foundation. Tell us a little bit about Office Foundation and then the reason why you're here. Let's get to know you. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for giving me also the floor here. It's just been um, five months that I, met, I first met with uh, David and his colleagues and we got introduced to IIPGH. And I must say, every time that I've been meeting um, the crew and uh, the Institute of, of ICT Professionals of, in Ghana, I've I've gotten more and more impressed of the activities that are run here. And I'm really grateful that I came over here and it's been super interesting to see the, the real activities that are going on. And I'm very happy that this hub is, is um, been put in place and that we are launching it today here. I'm happy to witness that 
the questions of the kids here have amazed me. Um, like when I see your eyes and the curiosity, you caught my curiosity in all this, what we are doing here. It's, it's been really beautiful. Um, the Air Force Foundation is um, also a foundation with its headquarters in Germany. I see there are a lot of German partners partnering IRPGH, which I'm also happy about. We are a value-based and business-oriented foundation. Uh, we are promoting economic, social, and environment development. So we are into international uh, development in a variety of countries. And in Ghana here, we launched a project that is called DigiCap. So we are into digital uh, capacity building. Um, not for the very young ones, but for rather for students at universities. Tease, our main partner university at the moment is uh, UCC, the University of Cape Coast. And we are doing digital uh, skills training, qualification programs at the university. We are also looking for partnering other universities as well. It's a project that is financed by the German Ministry of, um, of Economic Collaboration and Development. And um, yeah, IIPGH has been a major partner of the project and has uh, really been super support supportive with, with its wide network into the business world. It's important for us to not just develop skills of the young ones, but to bring them into the contact with the actual, with the economy, with those who are, with the business world, with those who are doing the things. And I'm, I've been seeing you're, you're doing what you're what you're talking about. And I'm very happy that AFOS Foundation is also partnering with IIPGH. Thank you very much, Hannah. Thank you. AFOS Foundation, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are still taking messages from some of our partners. And um, the next to go is Alpha Beta. And I'd like to call on the Director of Operations, Dr. Naomi Ajipong. She's going to join us online. On mute her, please. Because she's speaking, we can't hear. Please, she, she's. We have Hi. To, thank you very can much. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Okay. We can hear you loud and clear, Doc. All right. Awesome. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I just want to say a big congratulations. I've been enjoying watching all the demonstrations, and it's a very exciting time. Um, so, just to share with you, Alpha Beta Education Centers in Dan Suman has been working with the Institute of ICT Professionals Ghana since 2018. Uh, we've done a lot of work around teaching our children in school how to code and just generally to improve their ICT skills. So many of our children um, have passed through what has been a very vibrant after school program and they've been able to create some amazing software and websites and they all have wonderful testimonies to share. Um, through our personal and professional development subsidiary called Skill Up Africa, there have been a number of adults as well in the Dansuman locality who have also been able to learn how to code and to improve their ICT skills. Um, so we, we've seen firsthand, you know, what sort of opportunities uh, having these in-person centers can provide. And we're very excited about the prospects of this new digital design and creative coding hub, uh, which will definitely add to the success stories that we've already seen. Uh, for this particular project, I was contacted uh, by David Go a few months ago, and he selected two tutors from Alpha Beta to participate in the Train the Trainer workshops, uh, which I believe were organized by Codex, the, uh, the German partners. And so we are very delighted that we will be able to roll out um, coding to more of the students in our school. Um, as a school, we have a very strong focus on entrepreneurial leadership. And we actively encourage our students to develop 21st century skills um, to make sure that they are prepared for the future and also equipped to be part of the change that Africa so desperately needs. And coding and the creative use of technology is definitely a strong vehicle for us to be able to facilitate this change. So we are very, very happy about that. And we're particularly happy about the fact that the hub will provide opportunities to girls, to children, and to also to marginalized groups um, to help them sharpen their technology skills. Um, this 
for us, we believe will greatly improve access to tech entrepreneurship for young Africans and to also equip them to take advantage of IT-related jobs, both locally and globally. Um, the pandemic has been able to fast track the opportunities in virtual work. Um, so we believe that if we're able to equip young people with the right skills and the right mindset, they should also be able to take advantage of jobs, not just in Ghana, but all over the world. Um, most importantly for us, it will allow us to use technology to develop solutions to some of Africa's greatest challenges. So we are, we are very hopeful um, that this will be the first of many creative uh, and design hubs across the city, across the country, and indeed across the continent, as we all work together to provide opportunities uh, for sustainable livelihoods for the millions of African youth um, that we currently have. So I take the opportunity once again to congratulate the team at the Institute of ICT Professionals uh, for the wonderful work that you are doing. And we also thank the donors um, and all the stakeholders who have made it possible. So on that note, may God continue to bless us all and all the best. Thank you very much, Dr. Naomi Ajipon. Uh, we like your, ba your background. It's lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> It'll be good to watch a movie, you know, sitting behind those things. A round of applause for her, please. Uh, thank you, Doc. God bless you. you. All right, so we have one more partner that I'm going to introduce so that they can also share with us um, their feel about whatever is going on. Ivy Preparatory School, Yumanuel Adade. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I'd like to congratulate IIPGH Ghana for um, making this happen on this wonderful day. Actually, when uh, they contacted our school, Ivy Preparatory School and College, my principal selected myself and uh, a colleague of mine who is joining us via Zoom. And um, we went through the, the, the program. And uh, I must say it was very, very interesting. In fact, I was excited when um, Mr. Kafui Amanfu made mention that this is not for only um, computer science students or people with strong ICT background. I'm a business person, but then um, when we were introduced to the program, I got to realize that you don't really need any um, solid ICT background to take part in this uh, coding program. And so it was very, very interesting, um, considering the fact that it promotes creativity and uh, innovation. You know, it's not something that is boring because day in, day out, you can imagine anything and then you can just bring it out. You don't have to do one particular thing over and over again, which sometimes becomes um, boring. So I would like to encourage each and every one of us over here to really get involved in this program. Let's encourage our kids. And uh, even we, the adults, let's make it a point. Let's come for the training. And we'll be able to really come out and implement the great ideas and the dreams that we always have, have, have in mind. Thank you very much, and may God bless us all. Mr. Yimanro Adade from Ivy Preparatory School. Thank you once again. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, um, if you look at the invitation that we sent out to all of you, and even when, if you look at the flyers that's going around, um, our special guest of honor, um, she is supposed to be here with us. However, something came up, an emergency of national interest and um, she won't be able to join us. However, she decided that she's got an able gentleman who can step into her shoes to deliver her address to all of us. And I'm talking about the Minister of Communication and Digitalization, Honorable Esla Owusu Ekofu. So she's not gonna be here with us. However, let me introduce the rep, the able rep that will take over her position right now he happens to be the deputy director general operations national communications authority board member of the institute of ict professionals ghana mr prince sefa i 
Uh, thank you all for uh, the nice introduction. I have to uh, put it on record. I'm not here to step in the feet of, uh, of the uh, honorable and uh, uh, very much uh, great minister. Uh, but uh, I'm just going to give uh, a few remarks. Uh, Ghana's uh, digitalization agenda as led by the Ministry of Communication and Digitalization is on full course. We have seen an unprecedented effort in the area culminating in the increasing attraction of many global players like Huawei, Google, and Twitter setting up uh, major sites here in Ghana. Uh, it is therefore heartwarming to see that another collaboration between the professionals, uh, as in the ICT professionals uh, in Ghana organization, and other uh, partners from Germany, as we have all heard about uh, from the Republic of Germany and the Foreign Office. The accelerated efforts such as this is close uh, to close the digital gap, uh, particularly for girls and underrepresented groups create opportunities for our young people. It is noteworthy that the Ghana Investment Fund for Electronic Communications, GIFIC, um, an agency of the ministry, is leading the implementation of a digital skills program that will provide about 14,000 citizens with job-ready digital skills, in particular, women entrepreneurs, uh, pupils, teachers, and other marginalized groups through 200 sectors, uh, centers set up across the country. Private sector initiatives such as the digital design and creative coding hub being set up by the Institute as the Institute of ICT Professionals, Ghana, and its German partners, Coded, Tinker Toys, uh, and others, add and expand critical capacity in the ecosystem. That is what young people, especially girls, need to ignite interest in technology and pursue a career, very important careers in ICT related fields. In today's world, digital devices such as uh, 3D printers, smart interactive boards, notebooks, etc., are used in creative technologies, uh, motion design and other complex digital artifacts for current and future mobile web and internet of things applications. I'm convinced that the digital design and creative coding hub will provide a rich and exciting experience uh, to young people in 3D design, animation, media, aesthetics, and more. With these uh, digital experiences and creative technology, um, ideas surely are bound to happen with art and creativity. The hub should become a lab for research on emerging technologies and digital skills development in the Ghanaian contest. The output from this research lab may serve as the basis for engaging government on future digital, digital skills development policies. With such cooperation among countries and between the private and public sector, I look forward to having more exposure uh, transfer of knowledge from Germany and other places, and to ensure that we have rich experience in technical and vocational skills development of which ICT is an enabler. So ladies and gentlemen, on this note, I hereby declare the Digital Design and Creative Coding Hub duly launched. Thank you very much. Oh, um, um, uh, please don't go, uh, Mr. Prince. If I, uh, Mr. David Go, please. It is officially launched. We need to see your face. Executive Director of the Institute of ICT Professionals, Ghana. Uh, he's supposed to be here because officially and worldwide we are launched and he needs to be seen. Is he coming? Come again. Interview. Oh, okay. The media is interviewing. Thank you very much. A round of applause for him once again. Thank you. Thank God you. bless you, sir. God bless you. Thank you for your support. 
And the whole idea is to make sure that we have as many partners as we should so that, you know, we can move this forward and uh, do the work that we are all supposed to do. And if you look at our theme for the Digital Design and Creative Coding Hub, make ideas happen. And that's the way forward. All right. So for our closing remarks, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to invite the president of the Academic City University College and board chair Institute of ICT Professionals Ghana, Professor Fred Mark Bangalore. He will be joining us online. All right. Thank you so very much um, for that gracious uh, introduction. Um, look, as I sit here, you know, watching the kids, uh, watching all the presentations, um, I can't describe how excited I am. Um, I'm so excited also because I've watched ICT professionals pick this institution up from the ground up. And when they first approached me, um, I was Dean of Engineering at Ashasi University. And I just wanted to see how serious they were about starting such an organization. So I set the time at 7 a.m. for my first meeting with them. And if you know the road to Ashasi those days and now, it was quite rough. And they made it. And so that was, to me, a commitment um, to evolve this field, to put structure to it. And watching David and his team over the last three years has been nothing but an exciting journey. You know, I worked for Siemens uh, for seven years, uh, leading some of their earliest uh, digitization projects in 3D modeling of hearing instruments. And we were actually the first company that we know of that actually used 3D printing technology to make a medical device. And so 20 years later, for me to see this happening at this hub gives me a lot of hope. And so I'd like to extend uh, on behalf of the board and the executive team at ICT, our very thanks to the German team um, for being an integral part of this new journey for Ghana. I think this hub is just the beginning of many more great things to come. That the future is not only what belongs to those with knowledge. Knowledge is good, but skills are actually better. Knowledge is static, skills are dynamic. So let me say congratulations to all the team. I'm looking to working very closely with this team and all our strategic partners um, and to work with government to make ICT accessible um, as somebody indicated earlier in the conversation, to be an integral part of the courses that all students, irrespective of what fields of endeavor they are interested in, will have access to those basic skills. In my university, which is Academic City University College, everybody takes a course in Python, no matter what your major is. Because our ultimate objective is to prepare the next generation of the workforce in the language that is now common. When I was growing up, most people thought that by this time we'll all be speaking Mandarin. Well, we are still speaking English, but actually the language of the future is going to be science. We can no longer make an excuse that I didn't study science in school because the word AI is coming. Big data, data analytics, these are all terminologies, whether DNA, genomics, you mentioned it. They no longer belong to just the scientists. They are going to become the very aspects of our daily lives. So let me say once again, congratulations. Today is a great day for Ghana. It's a great day for the ICT professionals. And we appreciate everybody who has contributed to making this possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Fred Mark Bangalore. I, I, there's one thing that I admire so much from you, your consistency. Whenever the Institute calls upon you, you are always there. And I, I really you. salute this. I really salute your consistency. God bless you. Continue to support us and continue to be the chair. And when you are no more the chair, maybe I will take over from there. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Thank All right, you. so ladies and gentlemen, we are almost through. 
Before we go, I'd like to call on the Executive Director of the Institute of ICTC. ICT, please come over, Mr. David Gou. And then also, uh, Richard Kafui Amanfo. These are the faces you should look out for when it comes to the Institute. Kuku Sam, please, you should also join us. Kuku, please join us. I, I, there, there are final words before we finally go. Thank you very much. Uh, it's been a, an exciting day. Uh, we are very happy and um, we want to thank everybody. We want to thank the, our special guests and also Mr. Prince Safa and all our partners. Um, the hub has been declared launch and we look forward to having you all back here to experience the new and emerging technology. Thank you. One, two. Also, uh, I would want to thank our tutors and uh, the technicians in the back. If not for you, this today wouldn't have been uh, a success. Uh, we've taken a lot of time to get this facility here done. And uh, we are also giving thanks to our partners from Germany, uh, Andreas and uh, Sebastian and co. We thank you so much. And we thank the foreign uh, ministry, the Foreign Affairs of the uh, Federal Republic of Germany uh, for making this also a, a, a success. Thank you all for coming and I wish you all well. Looking forward to having more kids to participate in our programs from today and forever. Thank you. Okay, I would like to also use this opportunity to invite as many partners that share in this vision to come and then join us, create a future for this country. Thank you once again. All right, thank you. A very big thank you to the media also for coming. Thank you to each and every one of you here. God bless you. And a huge thank you to the partners online. They have made their time to be here with us and we are so grateful to them. God bless you for your continual support. and. Uh, I want to find out whether some of you would want to share your final words with us, those online. Please, if you could, quickly uh, share with us if you want to. Uh, Sebastian, would you want to say some few things to us? Or Andreas or Lena, please, if there are some few words that you would want to share with us, you are free to go right now. Uh, I just take the time to thank all... The, the people that are making this happen and we are looking forward to new projects and we hope that a lot of kids can yeah make their way to the hub and learn skills for the future thank you thank you andreas thank you uh, for me congratulations again for opening the hub today uh, really great event thanks for organizing and also for me, thanks a lot, a lot uh, to the tutors, a great presentation. I couldn't have done it better. And uh, thanks to all the kids for their patience and their curiosity and their great questions. And yeah, I, I wish, uh, wish us all the best uh, for the future in the hub. Thank you all. Thank you. Shall we have Lena? Yes. Hello. <laughs> yeah, maybe I uh, should introduce myself. I haven't done that yet. I'm the education assistant of Tinker Taste Choice, and yeah, I also would like to say thank you for this day and for the time, all of you. And yeah, special thanks to the kids. I was really impressed by all your smart questions, and yeah, I'm very looking forward to what you're doing in the hub with Tinker Toys and Coded. And uh, yeah, I think there's gonna be something really cool we can do together. Yeah, thanks. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> And then also a huge thank you to Code for Africa, an important collaborator also from Germany. God bless you all. It's been a wonderful time with all of you. I've enjoyed every bit of it, especially with the kids, amazing kids. I wish we were all my kids, but I'm not sure that I can be your father at the moment. So we can be a, you can be my friend, all right? Why are you always asking questions? Uh-huh. Okay, thank you. My name is Chris Equity. God bless you all and have a wonderful time. We have a refreshment for all of you. So take your time. Let's get to know each other, socialize a little bit, and then finally go back to our various homes and then have a wonderful holiday. Thank you all. I get new things to learn about. It's also difficult because sometimes I don't understand some parts of JavaScript and I have to get my teacher to explain over and over again. 